What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create a complete side-scroller platformer game. It will cover all the things that you will need. You will end up with a responsive player character, a speed booster power-up, enemy AIs, a cool level and much much more. Remember that you can download the product files through Patreon or YouTube members. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new Unreal Engine project. In this case, I am going to be using the latest version of Unreal, 5.3.2, and I do recommend that you use the same version as me or above. Now in this case, let's select the third person template as it will already contain a character with all the animations that we will need. Then let's go ahead and make sure that we select blueprints and then you can select your target platform. In this case for me, it will be desktop, then your quality preset, we can leave it as maximum and then we can just enable starter content to have a few more meshes and props to begin with just in case. Then just select a target location and then a project name. So let's go ahead and fill this in. All right, and now let's go ahead and select create. Okay, so the project has opened and in this case, the first thing that I want to do is to basically dock the content browser down here in the UI. So let's go up into window, content browser, select the first one and just get the tab, drag it to the bottom. Okay, just like to have it by here on default and there we go. All right, so now we press play. As you can see, we have this default, you know, third person character controller, but we can just go ahead and move around. So the first thing that we need to do is position the camera onto the side, right? And now it will actually get the feeling of a 2.5D side scroller platformer. So go ahead and do that. So for this, let's go and select the third person folder, open up the blueprints folder, and we can see the third person cat blueprint. Double click to open this up, and we have all the code, and in the viewport we can see the character itself. So we have this thing called the camera boom which basically attaches the full camera with our target, which is the player itself. And here we can do things as setting the arm length and all that stuff. So the first thing that we need to do is go into this camera settings on the camera boom and disable the use pawn control rotation. This is because this will override the camera rotation with our input, okay? So that's in third person and how we can basically move the camera up, down, left and right. But in this case, it will be fixed right just looking at the side of our character so let's disable this and then let's also just go into the rotation tool and on the z axis which is of course the blue let's rotate this around 90 degrees and now it is here on our player so if i go to compile and press play boom by default we have here the uh, character right and it's on its side and i cannot go and turn the camera or thing like that with our mouse and we can start to move but there's another thing which is basically that the camera will automatically go and you know rotate with the player so this is the thing that we need to change so let's go to third person select the camera boom go to the rotation and then here we're going to change from relative to weld that way it is on the weld position and when our character basically rotates it will basically not rotate with the character, which looks way better. Great, so with that camera settings done, now as you can see, we only have to make the player go only forwards and backwards, not left or right, as you can see, and then switch the keys. So with D, we will go forwards instead of going to the side. So let's go to the third person character blueprint, and if we go to the event graph, we can see the movement input right where we have the get control rotation get the right vector and we add the scale value on that direction right and we do the same with the forward well in this case we kind of have to basically uh, switch them up so the way to do this is just to go and get the value out uh, x right and just go ahead and connect it on the second one where the y was going and then simply just disable the y and now if I compile and save, so you can see when I press D, I go forwards. And when I press A, I go backwards. And that's it. We basically replaced the input axis, okay? So now it is good. And with W and S, we don't do anything at all. So we actually can go and you select this and, you know, just delete this nodes, delete these two nodes. And you select this, move it to the left, connect it back again. And then just go and adjust the comment scale. And there we go. So now we have the main movement and camera done. All right, so now as you can see, we have a really cool, you know, controller beginning to appear here. Now, the first thing that I would do is basically move the camera more further away 
from the player and then also go and add a bit of you know lag so basically our camera will not be exactly following the player uh you know consistently but we'll have a nice interpolation and smoothing which will look a bit nicer so let's go back to the third person character blueprint and what i would do is go to the viewport go to the camera boom and increase the target arm length to maybe something as 600. maybe that's maybe too much let's see uh, but that's a bit better uh, maybe 500 is a bit better okay but you can of course play with that value to you know get what you want but if, uh, yeah that's a bit better 500 will look very nice for us and then we're gonna go also to the camera boom go and search for lag and enable camera lag now we will have this variable which is the camera lag speed if i search this to a very low value you can see that the player will go faster than the camera right it's basically just adding a bit of delay smoothing out called lag now if this value is bigger that delay will be basically smaller so if we put something as eight we will get a way smoother controller which i really like and it looks way nicer another thing that we will do is just modify a bit the gravity and the jumping sp uh, speed right so i can go into the character movement search for gravity and we have different things so if i were to put this to one instead right now we have some more of you know control in the air right so if i go and maybe put this instead of oh, just one to something as 1.1.1 1. 1. 1, right we can start to get nicer you know uh, jump speeds and everything like that we can also just go directly and search for air and we have the air control if i increase this to one we have more air control right so we can move our player in the air which is very important for our platformer and it looks really really nice so this is pretty important all right so now with that said we kind of have our player moving around and things like that so let's go ahead and modify slightly the level so you know it will look a bit nicer for our side scroller so the first thing that we will basically do is go and delete this wall over here and we will also delete this uh, other one well actually i would just make it basically shorter and the same with the floor over here kind of just about here then let's just delete this other extra meshes that we will not longer need right and then just delete all of this and we can basically leave maybe uh, this one over here right and why well that's because now i can just get this and just kind of make it on here so we can start to do cool things so basically you know for example we can start to place a mini level over here right with things just like this right just play around with this so we can also change the uh, snapping of the scale too right so we can basically make it align perfectly and we can also play around with the positioning there we go with this like that there we go so everything is centered and we can just simply just start to put some things over here you know and delete this wall just to kind of play around and then expand this floor like this and we can just you know begin to kind of create these little things where you need to jump around and all the stuff right like kind of like this and we can begin to go here start to jump and create a mini level now in the future of course we'll replace it with cooler assets but for now in prototyping this looks pretty cool let me also expand this wall like this and then we can maybe start to also put one here like this right and you know make it a bit higher and kind of like this it doesn't have to be exact right we are playing around a lot but you get the idea and let me also just get set the snapping to be very small in here so i can we go adjust that um scale so it fits a bit nicer and expand this and so on and we slowly have you know some obstacles that we can begin to play around and most of this just to get the feeling of the game and how it will feel and all that kind of stuff so i'm liking how this is going ahead and looking over here great so the first thing that we would do to our gameplay to 
get things started with our level is going to be creating this danger zone where if you land in one of these areas you will basically die imagine that later we replace this with a hazard and your player just dies and we will restart the level so let's begin by creating this kind of area that we will apply to this danger zones so in this case let's go to the content right click and create a new folder which we will basically call blueprints now it's very important that our project is organized to make this game as efficient as possible because if not later on as it scales up it will be way harder to edit things as they're just all over messed up so let's right click create a new blueprint class and it will be an actor this is because this will just be you know an object that will be in our world and this is exactly what we need so let's call this something as bp underscore danger area and let's open this up so this danger area will consist of a component which if we search for collision will be the box collision and this will just be the collision itself and let's make sure that this is set as overlap all dynamic which means that our character can go through this collision but we will receive an event and that's where we want to basically apply damage to our player and kill it all right so we have this really nice collision which now i can just go and for testing purposes go and search for hidden in game and just disable this so when we press play we can still see this box just to kind of see how this looks and then just drag this into our level right and kind of there we go position it correctly and just make it bigger as simple as that we can maybe make it a bit higher right just fit it over there and now if our player goes in here we will apply damage so how do we do this well we can go to danger area go down and we can see they have this events section in the collision now in this case we have one which is on component begin overlap let's add this event and basically this consists uh, of triggering when an actor goes and you know basically goes into this collision in this case let's make sure that this is the player but actually we just don't need to make sure it's the player because we're just gonna be adding damage and this can also you know be for any actor at all maybe for even our enemies if they were to fall into this danger areas so we're gonna make it generic and just apply damage into whatever actor falls and collides into this so let's get the other actor and just do an apply damage node and this will basically go ahead and apply damage into whatever actor it collided with now we can apply a base damage of whatever you want but we can make it publicly available which means that we can change it directly from here and we can have different areas with different damages so let's right click on this base damage promote it to a variable and leave it like this and we can just put a default value if we compile so like this and put maybe like um just 100 right just to eliminate the enemy at all but you can play around with that maybe you won't want to you know eliminate the enemy at once right we can play around with that and then just go and select this eye icon which will make it public and as again see if i select this danger area in our level we have the base damage out here which is pretty damn cool all right so now with that said whatever actor collides with this we will apply damage but you'll see that if i play from here and just you know oh uh, of course you need to make sure that you basically always play from the play from start because if not our player will start to do these things which is basically that the rotation will basically just be messed up all right because of how uh the player is looking if i now press this now we go here i jump into here and if i fall you'll see that nothing will basically happen and this is simply before uh because uh, we are not doing anything when our player receives damage so if we go to third person character we go into the event graph we can add this node which is the on any damage or well, just directly any damage and this will basically you know do something whenever a player receives damage we will call him from here and in this case we're gonna make it simple if a player receives damage we will just die okay well third damage we receive this will be a hardcore game okay we will simply die so let's just do it simple and just do a destroy actor for now and later we can you know enhance this a bit and add a bit of ragdoll and so on which we'll do in a second actually but you can see that now if i fall here our player will boom disappear and die but we may not want that we want maybe to add some ragdoll physics right so it'll look a bit nicer so let's go quickly into here and just get this node out and we will simply just get the mesh 
and the other thing which is the set simulate physics and this will just go ahead and simulate all the physics with all the bones remember to take this on and we just need to make sure that our mesh has the collision presets of custom and on collision enabled of physics only sorry uh, collision enabled query in physics so all the bones can interact with each other if not it will all you know just be bugged out and then we'll do another thing which is disable input so we'll make sure that our player cannot move anymore around right we basically died and if i go and press play now we can go here jump go here and if i fall into this pit boom <laughs> our player is ragdolls and we cannot move anymore which is really cool and let's do a simple thing which is going to be a delay of maybe just two seconds and we will just go and open the level again which will basically be in this case the third person map okay so remember to type it exactly the same because if not it will not find the map and it will just not work but that said now we have a simple danger area where if we fall we basically die which is pretty cool and we can add more you know of this throughout the level all right, so the next thing that we will add, which is pretty cool, is gonna be a power up, okay? So when we impact this floating pop-up, uh, no, not pop-up, <laughs> sorry, power up, uh, we will basically just increase our speed, okay? It will be like a speed booster, and that will be our own power up for this game to begin with, but we will make it in a way where you can create childs and create different power ups for the future. So let's go into the blueprint folder, right click, new blueprint class, and I select an actor, right? As it will be basically a power up that will be floating in our level. So let's name this something as BP underscore power up. And let's open this up. So the first thing that we will have is basically a static mesh, okay? Which will be the mesh of this power up itself. Now, in this case, we don't have yet a cool kind of mesh that we can basically add into our project. But I think that we can add maybe this. Uh, what was it uh, this little editor help right it kind of looks like a power up so we will use this for now now let us uh, just go compile and save and let's add another component which will be a sphere collision okay and this will be the collision itself and we will use this as our collision for this so let's just put it at the center of this mesh and increase the sphere radius. And we're doing this a bit bigger. So instead of directly impacting on the mesh, we can kind of impact a bit further away and we'll have a satisfying collection, uh, you know, feeling because we're kind of doing it a bit before and it just feels a bit better and it's easier for the player to also get it. So with that said, uh, we're gonna go down and make sure that again, it is set as overlap all dynamic, okay? Which is uh, quite important. With that, we can just compile, save, and that's it. What we're gonna do is a child of this power up. So the strength of doing childs is that I can just go, right click, create a child, and I can just do BP power up underscore speed booster, right? And increase, uh, just open this up, and now I can just go and uh, you know apply some logic in here, and I already have this collision and mess, uh, mesh set up. And at any time, if I want to change this mesh, I can go to the parent, change it, and it will change it in all the childs, which is just saving us a lot of time, right? So let's go into the collision, go down, and let's add the on component begin overlap again. And then, as you can see, also in the begin play, we're calling the parent begin play, parent actor begin overlap, event take, and all that stuff, which is pretty cool. But anyway, now let's make sure that the other actor that is basically, you know, getting this power up is the player indeed. So for this, let's go to third person cat blueprint, class defaults, search for tag, and let's add a new tag to this actor. So in this actor section, add a new tag, it will be basically player. Compile, go back to this, let's close the your area, we don't need that anymore. Get other actor, add the actor hashtag node, and this will basically be player. Now make sure to spell it the exactly the same. If you want, you can copy and paste the name just in case, but this is very important. Now let's go and just make a branch. So if this is true, and the player that has collided with this power up is indeed the player because it has the tag player, what we want to do is just do a simple kind of print right now, right? Just to test this out, it will do a print of hello, and then just destroy this actor instantly and it will basically disappear. So now if I get the power up 
speed booster, okay, the child, remember to add the one that we want, not the parent, okay, and place this right here, press play, and just, okay, go to here, jump, and just collect this, boom, we have hello printed at top left of the screen, it was very small and quick, uh, but then also we got our, um, you know, this out, which is pretty cool, the, the probably just disappeared, which is kind of a, you know, collection, um, you know, uh, feeling that disappeared. So first of all, let's add some bobbing movement, right? Like moving slightly up and down, which looks pretty cool. So for this, let's go to the main power up parent, okay? And just add a animation. Now we're doing this in the parents, so all the childs that we do will have this cool animation. So we're gonna make it very simple, and we're gonna be using a timeline, okay? So we're gonna go into the begin play, delete all of this, and just add a timeline node. So this will be the bobbing movement, or I don't know, it's floating movement is gonna be a bit better. All right, and for this floating movement, what I can do is double click and just add a new float track. And this will basically just be the uh, location, right? Because the thing that we're changing is the location. And let's add a keyframe. And the first one will be when the time is zero and the value is zero. But then we will add another keyframe, which will be our destination, which will be when the time is uh, maybe let's do 0.5 and the value will be one. And let's set the length of this to be 0.5, which is when we uh, have the, our last keyframe. And now we will go from this first location, we will set up outside of this timeline to the other location just constantly, and then we'll do the reverse. And we will go and move up and down slightly, which is pretty cool. So now we have this location output. Now what I can do is do a lerp, right? Which is basically a node that will interpolate within two values. And this will be basically using the uh, vector, right? So we'll go from this location to this one. And in this case, the location that we want to change will be the mesh. So we can get the mesh and just set the relative location. And we're doing the relative because it will be the location inside of the blueprint, not on the weld. And now let's put the return value here and we can start to change this. So really the only thing that we want to do is change the Z. So we're gonna go into the mesh over here and we're gonna apply a start location of maybe minus five or even minus 10 or minus 20. Yeah, I think minus 20 and 20. So we can go here and put the start to be uh, minus 20 and then the end to be 20. And then we can just simply go and when this finishes, go and start uh, to reverse it. And that's it. It will go in a loop, right? Because we will begin, play, and we'll go here, do it, update it, and when it's finished, we will reverse it. Actually, it's not on here, sorry. <laughs> it's on finished. Disconnect this and connect it, okay, sorry. If not, it will never do the animation because, you know, in the update is going again to the reverse, but now we only want it when this animation has finished. So now you can see that if I press um, play and just go and do F8, eject, you can see that now it is not moving up and down. <laughs> Why? Well, if I drag the this the parent, you can see that it indeed is doing it, but only once, right? In the, well, why is it only happening once? Well, this is because it is never going back to play, all right? So what we need to do is a flip-flop on finished, and which will basically mean that the first time that will go, it will do the reverse, but the second time it will go back to play, all right? And the flip-flop knob just announced, uh, allows us to do that, right? The first time that we'll enter into the sequence, we'll go through the A output, and the second time through B. So first time that is finished, it will go to reverse, but the second time it will mean that we have already reversed, so we we'll go back to play. And now, yes, when I press play, it is bouncing up and down, and also this will happen with our child, as you can see. Now, it is maybe a bit too fast, so we can change that on the timeline and change the length to maybe around two. And remember to select the second value, right? The keyframe, sorry, and put the time to two because not nothing will change. And I can just go and press play. And now it is a bit nicer, maybe too slow actually. <laughs> so maybe instead of two, uh, zoom out, right? Uh, I think directly just one or 0.8 will be a bit nicer. So let's do 0.8 
I think that will be a sweet spot. And then let's press play. And yeah, I think 0.8 looks pretty nice. And maybe uh, minus 20 is a bit too much. So maybe minus 12 and 12 is a bit better. Cool. And now let's add another cool thing, which is going to be a small rotation. So we can just add another component, which is the rotating movement. And we don't need to create another timeline to increase the rotation and like that. Unreal has its own rotating movement and we can just put a rotation rate at set, right? So go ahead and rotate like this of 180. And if I press play, you can see that it will be spinning like this, which looks very, very cool. Now, maybe it's a bit too fast that we can decrease this to maybe instead of 180 to use 80. And now it moves a bit slower and way nicer. And this will also apply, of course, to our child. That's why it's very important to do it in the parent. And that's it. There we go. We have our uh, power up set up, which is pretty cool. Now, what we need to do right now, of course, is apply the actual power up, which will be the speed boost. So in this case, we need to do that, of course, in our power up child, right? Which is the speed booster and on here. Now, let's just delete the string and the destroy actor because we will need to do one thing before, which will be, you know, connecting with our player and going ahead and basically just increasing the boost. Now, there are two ways to do this. We can directly basically cast to the BP third person uh, character. But the thing is that this will actually get a lot of uh, resources in memory and in the long term it will impact performance. And that's not what we want. There's a more optimal way to do this, which is using an interface. So if we go back to our blueprints uh, folder, we can right click, go into the blueprint section and create a new blueprint interface. And I will show you what a blueprint interface can do. So let's call this first of all, BPI underscore, and in this case, power up. So this is the interface that we will use to basically connect all of our power ups with our third person character. Let's open this up and we'll create a new function automatically. What function will this be? Well, we want the power up of speed booster. So let's call this something as speed boost. And with that, as simple as that, we can go ahead and create a new function. Now, what the uh, interface allows us is to communicate between two classes, which uh, with, without directly having to reference the class, right? And that will basically save us memory as I just explained. So I could right now just go to this power up speed booster at this interface, which we will do in a second, and then just call the function like that. As simple as that. Now, the thing to have with this power up, first of all, before adding it, I want to add uh, a special, um, uh, specific input, right? What input will this be? Well, it will be the speed boost, right? What new speed we want to have. So let's have this as a float, and there we go. Now it has this input, and now, yes, I can add this to our interface. Uh, so let's go into class settings on our power up speed booster child, very important, it's gonna be in the child. Um, actually, no, we want this to be on the parent and then later on in the childs call the specific one that we want. So we go here, we can go to class settings and we can see the implemented interface section and just add our BPI power up. Compile, save, and now if we go into our child, we can see this interface for speed boost. So uh, the things that in here, if we open this up, we, are, we can basically, you know, do things as, you know, whatever logic we want. But the thing is that we don't want to do this on the uh, power up blueprint itself. We want to do this in the third person blueprint, right? Because that's what we want to do. And on here, basically call it. So um, we're going to go and just delete it from our remove players. So just uh, go to class defaults, sorry, settings, uh, remove it. From here so expand this remove yes it will go and we will not have it on our um, child and then i'm gonna go to the player and just go to class settings and on here yes add the interface right and in the place where we add the interface is where we basically implement it so if i double click now we can do things here and in this case when we receive this speed boost interface what we want to do is get the character movement component set the max walk speed and just basically set it to this new value that we will have. And with that, it will basically go ahead and work. And if I go and go into the speed booster child, 
I can now simply go to the other actor and call this. Look at this. This is the power of the interfaces. Let's go and say speed boost. And that's it. Put the new speed, which will be something as imagine 2000, just to put a big value. And that's it. We don't need to directly go and specify what uh, class this is. It is universal to whatever actor we will call the interface if it does implement it. Now, let's, let's go ahead and check if it does you know have that uh, interface just in case so we're gonna use this node which is the does uh, implement interface and we can just add this branch over here and we'll make sure that it has the interface just to avoid errors and that's it now if i go all right and press play uh go and if this happens just go and move this around the viewport and press play okay so this is a bug of unreal so you can see the access is breaking a bit this is basically the initial position of the player okay and that's also because the camera is on um how do you say well position but don't worry about that we'll look at that in a bit later but now when we have this i can go and boom as you can see I, okay i i went too fast but my speed actually increased which is pretty cool but there's another thing that we need to do and is of course go and destroy this actor uh so we will not see it anymore and it will look a bit nicer so if we go back here right and okay so <laughs> right now there's a thing going on and is that the the rotation of this is uh going ahead and starting and the player is just going ahead and is moving slightly to the, to the right uh, but don't worry we'll look at that in a second let me go and get this as you can see now the speed is way higher which is cool but of course, we need to go back to our default speed too. So to do this, what we will do is a simple thing. First of all, let's go ahead and add a new branch. We will be um, basically having a power up. So it will be uh, has power up. In this case, we will set this to true. But we will only apply the power up if we don't have one right now. So we'll make a branch. And if we don't have... A power up right now with this not boolean node we will apply the power up okay but if we have a power up we will not apply a new power up you will need to wait until it finishes now in this case we want to return back to our normal speed so before applying the new speed what i am going to do is have a new variable which will be the uh all uh, the default speed the default speed i don't know why i cannot type there we go <laughs> And this will go and be a, a float, and we will set it, set it with the current character movement get max walk speed. Okay, right before applying the new one, and that way we will go ahead and just make a delay on ha on the duration. Let's put it to be like maybe five seconds for now. And we will set the has power up to be back to you know zero and then we'll get these two nodes right which sets the max walk speed and we will set it to our variable which is the default speed so we will basically check if we already have a power up if not we will save on our variable or default speed uh, which was the one before our power up we will set this to true we will set the new speed and after five seconds set this to false and set the default speed back again all right as simple as that so now if i go and basically pick the power up i can move around right very fast and after five seconds you will see there we go that i return back into my normal speed which is what we want so there we go the speed booster power up is working and you can basically create new more childs of the power up pairing class and basically do more in the future all right, so now we certainly have a base of our side-scroller platforming game. We have, you know, the player input, which can go, you know, left and right, jump. And we have this danger area where if we fall, you know, to the down of the level, we will die. We can respawn. And we also have this speed booster power-up. But now, let's go ahead and make one of the coolest things, which, of course, are the enemy AIs. So let's gonna make them, you know, very simple. Just, you know, walking a bit left and right. And then... Basically, if you collide with them, you will die. But if you jump on top of them, we kill them, right? Like in Super Mario Bros. Okay, I'm going to make it very simple. So let's go into our, um, you know, project. Go to our Blueprints folder. Right-click and create a new Blueprint class. 
Now this time it will be a bit different because it will not longer be an actor, right? It will basically be a character, which is basically a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. So this will automatically have a mesh, a capsule collider, and also a character movement component, which are things that we need to make a character move. So that's why we're using this class. So let's select this, call this something as BP underscore enemy, and let's open this up. Now again, we can use the same tactic of creating an enemy parent class and then creating chows to create different type of enemy. All right, so let's go to the mesh. And for now, we will just apply, for example, Manny used to have a, you know, skeleton mesh to work with. Let's go to the location, put this to minus 89 and the rotation to minus 90. So now it is correctly positioned. Let's just go to an M class and put an asset of idle. Just for now, don't worry, we'll create the animation blueprint a bit later. And let's just, there we go, apply there. Cool, so now what we will need to do is basically make our enemy move around. So let me just go and put our enemy right over here. And let me just uh, center it. There we go, so it's aligned right on the middle of the level. And let's just by default make it look, I don't know, this way, like this. So I can now go to my BP enemy, go to the event graph. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two nodes. And we will do a little thing which is the add input uh, movement input right and this will simply just make the player move oh not the player but the enemy move uh, forwards so i can just get the uh, forward vector of this um actor right which uh, actor there we go and then just go and put it on the world direction and with a skill value of one it will basically move so if i now press alt s we can begin to see this now right now it's not moving so the first thing that i will need to do is actually make this on the uh, event tick because it will not happen only once but it will be on every frame so if i press play now it is moving and there we go <laughs> it basically it basically stomps with this and you know we will need to call it all the times per frame so that's why we're using the um event tick now uh right now as you can see it is basically just going into a straight direction and basically just moving so what we would do is a simple line trace so we can detect the floor and just detect if you know the floor will end and if so we will make our enemy stop and turn around and we'll do this uh, throughout the platform so how do we do this well let's go to functions and create a oh, create two all right sorry about that here we go create a new uh, function which will be line trace uh, for floor all right, and this will basically be an invisible line that will go from one point to another and it's basically like an invisible right cast and detect if there's an obstacle so we're gonna use this line trace by channel node all right but there's a more um let's say easier one uh, which will be not easier to code okay but easier for a uh, enemy to use because it will be a bit bigger and it's this sphere trace by channel and the difference between this is that this will have a radius and the line is just a thin line and if we use a radius we can detect the edge a bit further away which will be a bit easier okay so what will be the start position well it will simply just be the get actor location and then we're going to be using the endpoint of the get actor uh, up vector but of course uh, also we have another way of doing which is get uh, rotation get actor rotation and then also getting the up vector so you can choose if you want to use these two nodes or the other one is the same but of course we want the down vector but it, that doesn't exist so we just need to multiply this by right clicking to a float by a negative value and then whatever um, distance we want to go downwards in this case minus 500 will be more than enough and I can put this to be at the end so let's put a radius of 15 and the visibility to this and then the book type for duration uh, actually for one frame uh actually not for duration and we're gonna put the debug time to point one second all right so now on here we can simply use uh call the line trace for floor 
alt s you can see that is happening now there's a thing that we need to change on the line trace and it's basically add these two nodes together for our endpoint so we get the direction two. Oh, I, uh, there we go and now yes we can see that we're doing a line trace downwards and we're detecting the ground so this is what we want to do right but we want to go and do this before adding our movements right so we can decide if we want to continue adding movement or not but of course we also want some outputs we was we want to do a check over here if to continue or not so let's go and get the return value as an output so how do we do this well let's select this node and just go into outputs and in this case let's just add this uh, floor detected okay and in this case let's go and just add this over here pass it as a value and there we go so if floor is detected we'll go ahead and use add movement and if not we will stop so now our guy will go and basically fall why well because it's detecting the uh, that there's not a, a floor too too late right we need to do it a bit uh, sooner so a way to do this is to go into the viewport go to the mesh right and i will add uh, well not the mesh but the capsule and i'll add a thing called an arrow and now this can be the line trace floor position and i can put this arrow a bit forward and this is where the line trace will appear and go downwards okay and we're doing this in 3d as a uh, arrow because we have a bit more of a uh, you know flexibility moving this around so i can now go this and get the line trace component and then get, get the weld location instead of the actor location connect this to the start then to the add node and that's it now as you can see when i press play it will do it a bit sooner now still there's a lot of um friction that is happening and it's just you know continuing to, to to do this right and also the the this is too much right we're detecting the floor uh downwards too so it has to be maybe like minus uh 20 only right and now it should yeah that, that's not too much <laughs> you can see that uh, it, it doesn't get to the ground so it doesn't uh move right so we need to do maybe like minus 100 uh, something like that yeah that works as you can see now it is indeed detecting it now i need to basically maybe do it a bit sooner so i can get my uh, arrow and put it a bit forward and now it will stop a bit more in there we go in here and then what i want to do on the event graph uh, is on the false do the ops right do this put this over here put this over here but with a scale value of minus one and now you can see that it will go and then go backwards um but it will detect again this and, and try to go forward right so it is basically uh being stuck in, in in a loop right so how do we do this well we need to basically set some booleans over here all right so in order to make this you know back and forth when we don't detect the floor we have to do some modifications to our code right here so the first thing that we are going to do to keep things a bit more organized is use this sequence node and this will allow us to first have a now put pin and then have another one and we can have different things you know at different levels right that we can you know make things more organized the next thing that we are going to do is create a new variable which will be move forward okay and this will basically be true by default so let's compile true compile and you know we will basically have a flip-flop in a second which will basically you know change where whether we go uh, forwards or backwards so in this case we are going to go ahead and unlink this to guys here move them down and create two custom events the first one will be just move forward and let's connect this uh, move forward node and then let's create another one which will be move backwards and we will put this um, one over here and with that said uh, we can call this to custom events and basically this is you know a bit more organized so then in the second branch what we will have is this forward um you know boolean and if so we will simply just call move forward and in the other one move backwards 
Now we could directly just connect this one to here and this one to here, but that way it's a bit more visually, you know, easy to read, right? Than what we will do and have them separated over here. Now in here, we can basically have a do once node. So it will only happen once, but in the files output, right? And then here we can simply have a flip flop, which will set the move forward to true on, sorry, to false on A and to tr uh, true on B. That way, the first time that we don't detect, detect the, fl uh, the floor, we will set move forward to false and we will start to go backwards. But then the second time that we don't detect the floor, we will set it to move forwards and go back forwards. And this will repeat in the loop. Now let's go ahead and select the true on reset so we can call this more times. And now when I press play, boom, there we go. It is working, but oh, our character falls backwards that's because still you know going and putting the line trees uh, forward so first of all we will need to make our character just face um the direction that he's moving to so we can do that on character movement uh, go down and just enable orient rotation to movement and then go to class defaults search for yaw and disable use control rotation yaw and that way when we go and press play we will go and okay so yeah um there's a little thing right here right um we will need to override this way of doing so because if not in you know the changing of, of, of rotation uh our character will basically just fall and it's hard to do this so i'm gonna go back and disable this approach right i'm gonna make a different uh type of approach right which will be kind of a custom made and we will manually you know uh, rotate it so the rotation can basically take place over here. So in this case, we can just um, add actor rotation, right? And it will be world rotation. And in the set, it will simply be 180. And we will do the same over here. And now you can see that when I press play, there we go. <laughs> Our character will start to, uh, you know, you know, look the other way. Um, but of course, it is going ahead and having a bit of uh, motion still. So I'm going to go ahead and just get the um, uh, character movement component and just disable the movement. That way, the character will basically go ahead and stop moving moving in, in, in both uh, you know cases. And we will you know, not have that part. And we go. Now, basically, the character stops moving, but he doesn't go back um, again moving um why well in theory we should <laughs> continue to stop moving uh so let's see as you can see when i press play right boom we stop and there we are detecting the ground but the character is not moving um and also he doesn't fall or anything like that and that's really because we disabled the oh sorry so it's <laughs> it's not disabling the movement it's stop movement okay uh, stop movement immediately. Sorry about that. I, I, I confused the notes. All right, this can be very common in real, right? Because they also may have similar names. But it's not disabling movement, it's stopping the movement. Sorry about that. So now, boom, we stop and we continue. But it is still moving in the other direction, uh, as you can see. Why? That's because we actually don't need to now make this, um, make this uh, difference on 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 the move forward we can directly just move forward okay because we will not need to move backwards in that case we can simply just move forward so we actually now not need <laughs> any longer the move forward variable right we can directly just pull this all together and uh, just delete the move forward variable and that's it all right because of course when we turn now the forward is forward again so we will not need that approach but if you wanted to create kind of a straight movement you now know how and we go the character will go in both directions now it is going extremely fast so let's change the walk speed uh max walk speed and to maybe something as 250 right which is a bit better i mean okay it is going so fast and that's a bit better as you can see and it looks way nicer now let's go ahead and also apply some uh, transition right some interpolation so we will not snap looking into that way all right now let's also go into the enemy viewport select the skill to mesh and change this to the walk forward animation okay uh, it should be mm i think 
uh, so well I mean we have we have different ones right for jogging and all that stuff but the one that we want is this and there we go so now this looks way nicer I uh, go also to line trace and just uh, change the the bug type to none and there we go he now just basically goes ahead and walks like he should and it looks very very cool all right so now it is time to make our enemy deal damage to our player so let's go to our enemy blueprint go to the viewport and what i am going to do is go to the uh, capsule component and create a new line trace right now we're going to be using this arrow component as a initial position right so this will basically be the attack damage position and i'm going to put it right in front okay kind of here a bit up so it'll be a bit more you know centered and then what i am going to do is to get this line trace and basically duplicate it and this will be line trace for damage all right and now this will be a bit different because I will get the attack and replace it. So I can just hover over this and it will replace that, um, you know, thing. And then I can go and delete this other nodes, plug the end on here. But there's a, a better way, which is just uh, directly getting the, the rotation, right? And it will be the well rotation. And then just times in this by this uh, flow value, which will be basically the distance. So we can put something as 200. Now, if you didn't see this flow value, you can just right click and convert it to a float like we did before. And then, I'm, well, 200 is maybe too much, maybe 150. And then let's go and just basically add this and add this together. And that will be our end point. And then we're going to put the radius of, uh, yeah, 20 something. And then we're going to make this for duration and maybe for a duration of a second, right? And now I can just go to the event graph and in the event tick, I'm going to add another sequence here and just add the attack trace over there. Where is it? Uh, over damage, right? I call it damage, not attack. And it should be here. There we go. And we will also not need any other uh, return node uh, for now. So we can just delete that. And then just add it again, trace the damage, and there we go. So with that said now, as you can see, if I go and press Alt S once again, he's basically making this uh, damage, right? Now it is very far away, right? He's basically doing damage like a lot of meters. So let's go and put this to maybe 50, something that makes a bit more sense. And this makes more sense actually. And maybe that's a bit too much even so i think that 35 will be the sweet spot let's see yeah so if the player goes in front of this it will apply damage so we can go and just put this uh for one frame right then we will see this damage box which makes sense and i am also gonna take the attack arrow a bit backwards and there we go so now let's go back to the line trace for damage and if we do detect something what i'm going to do is break this hit result and we have all the information about what we have basically detected and we're gonna make it simple i'm gonna get the hit actor which is whatever actor we have collided with and just apply damage in this case i'm gonna check okay if it's the player tag or anything like that i am gonna just apply damage to whatever is in front okay so that way we can also make cool things like enemies dealing damage to themselves and so on now the base damage let me put it as 100 as we we'll just eliminate the player 100 percent now let's go and just press uh, play normally and just go up here jump over this pick this up right jump and then when he turns we should okay <laughs> so the thing is that um right now the player wasn't uh, alienated with the floor but if i go once again skip this jump and okay so as you can see we have a problem right so our player is basically slowly moving right slightly to the to the left each time right like we basically begin the, the game right pretty much in here but we are going at different uh, sides depending on, on, on where we go right so this is the thing that we will look in a second but uh, yeah you can see that we are not exactly the center right which is a thing but I can go and okay I just died <laughs> I can go 
and just go over here and yeah all right all right so let's fix this before testing anymore so the way that we're gonna fix this character by going you know a slight offset to the left or right is going to open this up go to the event graph and you see this get control rotation right which we had it connected with the set i basically had it disconnected because i was testing how we can fix this but you have it like this right well in this case we are not going to be using the get control rotation but instead we're going to get the actor rotation right and that way we will make sure that it will always go can i only use that there we go I delete this and put it here it will by default because our player start and our actor will basically spawn looking in the correct way it will basically always be in the middle and now if i eject it is at the exact center and there we go and i indeed can go and be in front of this guy right you can see it's exactly at the center now it is not dealing damage why well this is because of our line trace properties so right now for our damage line trace we have it as visibility for our channel but for our third person character if we go to our mesh and we go down to the collision settings you can see that for visibility we have it on ignore so we only have to check this box to block it and indeed now you can see that i can go and he will basically deal damage to me when he goes ahead and turns around and boom i die right and this is just simply because now uh, we are detecting that mesh before we didn't now we also need to go ahead and make sure that we can go and deal damage to the enemy how will by jumping over him so what i am going to do is go to the enemy go to the viewport and once again another collider so this collider will basically be a simple sphere collision and this will be the damage collision all right so let's place this kind of around in the head like this we can play around with the radius a bit later but basically on component begin overlap if the other actor has the tag player which means that of course it is the player indeed well we will simply just go and basically die how we will do exactly the same that we did with the player so here's the first challenge of today okay i haven't done any challenge yet because i wanted to kind of explain step by step but this is the thing that we have already done okay which is basically ragdolling the you know enemy in this case and also going ahead and disabling the movement right uh now in the player we disabled the, the input but actually before i show you guys a node which is disable the movement input of, of the character movement component so you go ahead and need to use that so i'm gonna leave you okay for a few seconds and just do that and we'll go back to the video you know just pause the video and we'll check this out Alright, so let's go ahead and first of all just get the mesh and use this node which was the set simulate physics which again we used and the remote to enable the simulate uh, we just used here, right? It is exactly the same one. And then we just need to go and get the character movement component and just say disable movement and that's it. Okay, as simple as that. But of course we need to make sure that our mesh also has the collision settings on custom and then collision enabled collision enabled query and physics so all the bones can interact with each other and now yes if i go and just jump around and jump on the head boom he dies but we keep floating why well this is basically because um we are going ahead and um keeping the capsule component alive but I need to disable this so what i am going to do is just get the capsule component and change the collision setting so in here i'm gonna change the collision uh setting okay so i can do in set collision uh response to all channels uh well not to all channels but in here collision to channel and in the channel channel for pawn it will be ignore and now our pawn will be able to go and there's another thing that we need to do which is also stop the line trades for damage so i'm gonna go ahead and make a branch before and only go ahead and do this if we are not dead so let me add an is dead uh, function also rotating delete that i don't know why it was dead okay <laughs> sorry about that i was one of my testings and then is dead will be if it's not boolean okay so if we are not dead that will mean that we will do the line trade but if you are dead no nah. let's enable is dead on here and that's it 
So now if I go and press play, jump over here, jump over this because I don't need the pop-up right now. And then jump over the head, boom. The player dies and there we go. Now still we have a problem with the camera and that is basically the, how do we say the, you know, the, 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 the visibility which is blocking. So if I go to enemy, I can go to the capsule component and go to the, uh, to here. Set it to custom and get the collision. But there's one thing that is different, right? Uh, apart from this, I also gonna just disable the the camera channel. We can do it from here to ignore, right? So that will not happen. But basically, what happened was that our player, okay, uh, capture component and mesh. That our basically what happened is was that our uh, player moved a bit backwards, right? Because he was on top of his head. There's some friction going on, and he moved. Okay, that was what was basically happening. So, how can we fix this? Well, there is a very simple way. We're gonna go and basically override the X and Z positioning. Well, not Z, X and Y, sorry, for the third person character. Well, only Y actually. So, if we go here, this is the Y. I'm gonna go ahead and override this so our player can move uh, into these two positions, right? This axis. So I'm gonna go here, go to the event tick, and oh, this is on third person character by the way, and we are simply going to go ahead and just set the actor, uh, sorry, set the actor location, if I know how to type, there we go. Now let's go ahead and right click and split this into different axes. So for X and Z, right? Um, in this case, it will just be how it is. So I can just get the current actor location, right click, split it to different axes, plug X and Z. But for Y, it will basically keep the same, which by default, okay, I need to disable this for now, which by default, it's basically uh, 1100. So I can now go and put 1100, And we should have this fixed. And there we go. So we can move in these two directions. Now, why the player is now <laughs> not going backwards? Well, good, good question. Um, <laughs> let's go quickly to the character movement component and make sure that we have the, uh, where is it? The uh, orient rotation to movement enabled. And in class defaults, we have uh, use control rotation yaw disabled. And we do have it. Um, so why is the player now not going backwards? Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, These things are unreal. So actually, I believe it's a bug of the engine. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It sounds a bit weird, but I do think it is. But don't worry about that right now. Let me restart the engine in a second. But let me go jump over here and jump on top. And now, boom, as you can see, we don't have that problem of um, going a bit to these sides uh, because of the collision. Right now, we still are on 1,100, so that fix is done. Now, let me go and let me quickly just uh, reopen that level just in case, and let me restart the engine because I don't know why right now it's not going backwards, honestly. All right, so <laughs> I'm a bit stupid right now. It wasn't, of course, a uh, bug of the engine. It's indeed the change that we did here in the movement input. So actually, we do need the get control rotation. Okay, it's something that we need. So our player will basically turn. All right, so let's replace this again. And now you will see that actually our player will go again backwards, okay? Now, a thing that I want to do is uh, plug this back again. And you will see that now, you know, that error will be resolved because, I mean, we are hard coding that, um, you know, let's say, location so now we can have back the control rotation node and also not have uh, the player have that offset right so our thing now is going ahead and working and that's basically great there you go i fail there we go cool so now everything is going ahead and working and you know we're you know advancing a lot in this game all right, it is time to finally enhance this game by, of course, importing some nice assets. So the first one that we will basically import will basically be this pirate um, asset pack, okay? Which will just contain a simple pirate 
character that is pretty cool and we can use import a character and it will look nicer so let's go ahead and do so now i will link it in the description in case we haven't it's free and just add it into your uh, epic games library and now we can import it so let's go ahead and just add it to what print well it will be of course this one and just you know add it to the bread and we will wait a few seconds and we will have it imported okay it won't take a lot and there we go so now if we go back to my project i have this new folder called pirate and of course i have the ue5 full mesh over here and we have some variations right we have uh, this one and so on and i think that this one looks pretty cool so let's select this right so let's go here boom control space pirate uh mesh we five full and drag it into here and there we go now we have it there and i can go and play around and this looks very very nice now his um his arms are a bit squished right not as squished but too close to his clothes so i'm gonna change this to abp manny and now they're a bit better as you can see so there we go and now we have this really cool character with cloth physics and everything like that running around which I really like. So for our enemy character, we have another variation, right? So I can go back into enemy, go to the mesh, and I can have, for example, this one without all the clothes and things like that. He looks more of an enemy, right? So I can go here, jump over here, and there we go, boom, I kill him, <laughs> and it looks pretty nice. Now, one thing that I like to do is to maybe add a little, a little bounce, right, when we impact our enemy to have more of a impact feeling. So we could go back to the BP enemy, go to the graph, and when we receive an equation, I can get the other actor and do a launch. Well, in this case, I can't. So we would do the only little case of casting to the third person character okay because i don't believe that in this case just for adding a little bounce it's necessary to create the whole interface so in this case let's use the casting because we're gonna have it only once and then use the launch character node and now we can just basically get the uh you know up vector this one all right so we can get the uh, actor rotation just get the up vector and then use times this by right clicking to float and then we're gonna add a specific force what force do we want to add into here well let's do something as maybe 200 just for now right let's go put this here and use press play and let's test this out so go back here Oh god, okay, that's too much. <laughs> Wait, 2,000? No, 2,000, not 200. Sorry about that. Uh, let me also just quickly add um, a character here. An enemy, right? So it's a bit faster to test this up. Um, okay, that wasn't... All right, let me rotate it. Uh, okay. Yes, okay, so actually, we will need to do another line trace if we detect a wall, right? Because we only have done it for um, edges, but also for a wall. And let me just um, go and skip this one, because we will fix that in a second. But go and test, okay, yeah, that force is too little. I think that uh, we might need to go to maybe 700, or even uh, something as 800, right? That will make a bit more sense, so let's quickly go back again. Let me we'll, uh, sort the enemy out in a second for walls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that is interesting because we also need to uh, go ahead and remove that collision. Right, damage collision has to basically set enabled. Collision enabled uh, to no collision. So we cannot continue to jump and deal damage. Alright, so now let's go to the enemy and create another type of collision, which will be, instead of for a floor, it will be for wall. And let's double click on this, we are in the wall, and this will, instead of being the get up vector, it will get the forward vector, so it will be basically forwards. This will not need negative anymore, that will go straight forward, and that's pretty much it. So I can now go back to the vent graph and do another line trace, right? Um, in this case, it's going to be a bit different because we need to evaluate 
both traces. Let's see how we can do that. So the way that we're gonna take this is by merging both of them. And what do I mean? Well, we are going to basically include also the other function in this other line trace for floor, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is just double click on this line trace for floor, expand this, okay? And just do a little sequence over here like we normally do. And then just do the line trace for wall and we can drag it or also just type it, okay? So line trace. Uh, for wall and then this will you know give us of course our output now what we're going to do is do an or statement okay and this will be our final output so if we have basically you know detected a floor or a wall we will return this over here and with this we are good to go so I, I actually was doing some testing over here but this is the way that we want to do it so now as you can see we will detect for floor and then for wall, we are bugging things out. <laughs> so um, as you can see for this one, it works. And for the wall, it doesn't. Why? Well, let's take a look. So we go here, right? Then we go into here. We can see that um, we are first of all doing the, the, the one for you know the floor and then for the uh, wall over here. So the thing is that we need to do the output on the second one because if not, never the line trace for wall will be basically executed okay that's the only thing that we had to do and now you can see that it also will detect the one for the wall but it will still not turn yet so the thing that we're gonna do is just make a print and just see if we are detecting a wall in this case true all right so true and and wonderful false but in this case we are not doing uh you know the, the the thing for the line trace for wall okay we're using the visibility getting the forward vector we're gonna put this for duration and then for the damage we're gonna get the debugging out All right so right now we have only for the wall and as you can see we are detecting that but it doesn't turn so what we're going to do is just change the sequence to all go at once okay so we will compare both at the same time all right and we will do this one and this one like this all right so the way that we are actually gonna do this is gonna be we're gonna get this uh return value and do an uh well first of all this one okay the line trace for wall and do a not boolean because in this case it will be uh only detecting the wall if we have it in front not like the floor that we are always detecting it so we need to make it always detect when there's not a wall so now add a not gate and then an and and then just connect this and put this here and as simple as that if i now press play as you can see they're both working okay whenever we had it before right with our floor and then also with the wall which is very very cool now for the wall i'm going to change the output to instead of floor detect to wall detector so it makes a bit more sense then this to around 50 okay so it which is a bit closer and then also back on the uh, line range for floor just for uh, obstacle right so it, in this case it's universal for both then let me just close all of this so we have it a bit more organized and well that's it so now both of them are going ahead and working which is pretty cool so let me go back to the wall and just put the debug to none and that's it now both cases are working all right, so for the environment, we're gonna make it very interesting, and it's like we're gonna be, you know, walking on billboards and this cool stuff. So we're gonna be using this freeway props free asset, and of course you can use whatever you want. But for this uh, complete game, we're gonna be using this uh, tutorial. We're gonna be using this pack. It's free again. I will link in the description, so you just add it to the project that we need, which again will be this one. Select it, add it, and it should be fairly quick. Um, so let's wait a few seconds All right, so you can see it has successfully imported. So if I now open real we have this new um, You know freeway asset pack right with different blueprints, right for example this sign and um, and more stuff You know meshes itself, of course, so I think that this blueprint has no okay So this blueprint is I don't know why they have this blueprint But <laughs> and here we have all the meshes right which is the cool 
thing so this is where we can kind of begin with right so the first thing that i want to do is to add this bullet board and we will basically let's say begin okay with this bullet board over here now one thing that will occur is that it will be very high so our game will basically consist you know on a higher um you know altitude let's say which is gonna be very cool now the you know way to walk with is <laughs> it's pretty small so i need to just kind of make this stretched out right to kind of make it a bit easier for us and i think that there might be others where it's uh, a bit more let's say visible oh uh, no okay that's actually mm, that's actually okay um but yeah we have a lot of options to play around with but this one seems pretty cool so we need to make sure that the you know let me just go and put this down that the path aligns where the player begins right which is kind of around here so let's begin by deleting the floor and we will just you know begin here okay like this uh this will need to be a bit like this all right there we go and now we basically begin here now one thing that i'm seeing is that we have this lights that will be kind of in the middle uh, but don't worry let's go and remove the collision and let me add this out of convex collision and uh, okay that will not work because you can see that it will be floating so we're gonna remove it go down and just enable this uh com collision uh, complexity to use collision uh, complex as simple and this will make a very 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 um accurate collision where we can basically walk through and you can see it here so for now press play we are walking through here but there is a problem and of course is you know with this little guys so let's see what i can do but um overall it's gonna be hard to I think use this mesh maybe we need to use another one uh really yes really because of these little things right but there's one thing that we can do which is pretty smart and it's to go here just remove the collision so go into here pre default collision remove there's no even a collision and then just uh, go and put this bit higher and then just go add a collision which will be box collision and then just basically bring it this up okay there we go put it here and manually go all right and just change the box extent to fill this on okay and this is a pretty good technique that we can use and with that said i can disable the snapping put it exactly there and boom well not boom because i need to go and make sure that this box collision is not set as overlap but as block so we can walk on it right and we go now this makes sense i can walk on the billboard and we can continue on our journey so let's delete this over here and we will basically have let's say another sign or whatever you want to have i don't know yeah let's just go hold alt to duplicate it right put it to be a bit higher you know let's put it pretty much the same level here i'm gonna change the mesh right of this to be i don't know this other builder right so we can have a bit of um variation going on and this is just you know taking a bit of time to build something that is uh, pretty cool um but you get the idea so as you can see now this is going ahead and working the enemy is also walking on this and i need to go also to here and just remove the collision because of course we want to use the one that we placed manually right as you can see here and we can do all this stuff there we go and looks pretty cool drop this one here and then just kind of of uh, put maybe let's say a danger inside in here then we need to kind of go like this and then we can have maybe stop one here floating right because you know we can kind of make things a bit more arcadey right it doesn't have to necessarily be super realistic right uh, i can just take this one 
if it loads and doesn't crash <laughs> not this one sorry but this one and then just go and kind of put it like this right oh not there but of course here and something like this you know and we can start to play around with this right so i can go here have the enemy kill it collect this jump kill it and you know all that good stuff which is pretty cool so i can put another um one of these over here Let's duplicate it put it higher right put it right there pretty much and then just to the right and again go here and change the mesh to maybe this one right which looks pretty cool delete the floor and we know we slowly build this little level over here right and um you know we can kind of go and again make more flying little things right so in here we can start to kind of put this like this right and just make the player kind of need to jump all over the place to you know reach the destination right like this maybe this here and we kind of build our level like this right which looks pretty cool there we go jumping around with the power up oh we need to disable collision this one too and then jumping on these and so on so let's select this one oh, Control e to open this up remove the collision and there we go and now we slowly you know build this little thing now let me delete the walls on this and let me also go and press Control l to position the sun in a more interesting place right and we can play around with that you know, like this I like it like that I mean by default it was okay the Sun is right there we'll play around with that in a second but another thing I want to play is with the clouds you know so let's go and select the where is it the sky atmosphere and change this to be at the component transform that means that we can change this rotation and we'll move the cloud itself so I can basically put a huge number here and they will begin to go down right and what I want to do that was maybe too much is to go and you know change the positioning of these clouds so they make a bit more of sense so we have 8k 9k no 90k all right so here okay this may be too big all right that's that makes a bit more sense four makes sense five is pretty much here eight ah i think we are inside of them that's why so if i put like 20 here it should be the bottom or are we inside <laughs> good question here uh, so this is playing with the values we can really go we are pretty much going to space guys <laughs> i think i think that's too much right we can put this into more normal value um and just uh put oh planet center at transform and that's gonna make it a bit easier for us to put like this uh well no i think actually at the top yeah at the top is easier and that's too much. Uh, that's way too much. That's a bit too much also. So in here we're reaching the clouds, right? So I'm going to leave it here and just mm, move everything up. Okay, it's going to be easier for us. So let's go and get everything. So from the danger area to the both enemies, the players start building boards and everything okay except those data layers and just with the z axis move them up and we will not break anything or anything like that okay guys you're just you know making things 
higher and there we go now we are in the clouds and it looks <laughs> way cooler right as you can see uh, another thing is that we might need to play with the fog right to make this uh, volumetric and use you, you know as you can see increase it or decrease it now in this case i think that we need to decrease the fog i don't know if it's bugging a lot or not but it looks better without the fog right so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna uh, disable it with this slider and that looks way nicer and yeah slowly you know we can build this level over here and you know we're all just uh you know make a really cool kind of floating um you know platformer game which is what i like to see you know and i think that we could you know end up with a pretty cool result let's also have a very cool rotative platform right so let's go to our blueprints right click create a new blueprint class not level sorry <laughs> blueprint class and it will basically be an actor right as it will be in our world let's name this something as bp underscore rotative uh you know platform and now let's open this up so let's build this from two pieces right so let's press Control space go to our freeway folder you go into meshes and the first one that we will get is gonna be this ball I don't know which one but just drag one in I think this looks pretty cool and then let's go and also Do it for another one which will basically be for example this one right drag it and here we go So make sure to have it as a child move it and just place it on here and let's just decrease the size right so around here and now let's just add this rotative movement component that we already used, right, for our um, power-up. Now let's put this to be something as maybe 50. And now if I go and drag this into our level right on here and just increase the size overall on here, right, so maybe like 5. We have this, well, 5 is maybe too much. Maybe like 3 is a bit better. All right, and yeah, this looks pretty cool. So now if I press play, you can see and eject, we have this rotating, which is pretty cool. All right, and yeah, that's it. I mean, <laughs> there's no more mystery into it. And of course you can create more duplicates and variations and, you know, make things look a bit nicer. But overall, that's the start of our level. Now also, let's just make sure that we use Nanite, which we are, as you can see, right? For our meshes, which, you know, is way better for performance and, everything like that and overall i like how this looks you know the only thing that we might need to add is a bit of a different lighting right so we can just go and you know change the lighting to kind of be from here right like this and this looks i think way cooler honestly with this lighting uh, maybe we can put it to be more like this here more in front of us yeah i like that i definitely like that and then you know some post processing right so i can go here into visual effects post processing go and search for the infinite unbound so it will cover the whole map not only this area and then go to exposure and put it from you know one to one or not one to one but maybe point three and point three and we nice and bright and we're gonna go into the uh, color grading go to global and just increase a bit the saturation to maybe 1.1 and the contrast to uh, 1.05 right and with that we have a bit of a better colors as you can see which looks pretty cool now let's add a you know a little sound when we collect our p cable so before doing the destroy actor let's do a play sound at location and let's add this camera shot okay We'll add the volume of 0.7 or 0.8. And then for the location, we can put something as get actor location. Now for now, this will not be in 3D because we need to have sound attenuation. I don't think it's necessary for now. But basically now, as you can see what I go here and you know, let him go, we get this and we have a nice sound. And let's also use, you know, do some damage sounds, right? So let's go to here where we receive uh, damage and right over here before doing the delay and everything like that again play sound and on this one we can just do it to d directly and we have some things 
we can do let's do a jig front player and let's put point eight also okay and now we have a sound when we basically go ahead and die which is pretty cool then let's go into the enemy right and open this up and we will also play another sound okay uh let's do on the damage collision right uh right over here we'll play sound at location get actor location and now i'm gonna leave it ready to be in 3d but not apply the ascent to nation again and now we can put another sound this one i think it's pretty cool Point eight, and there we go so now we have some sounds going on right so i can go here and just go and kill the guy and kill also that guy there oh my god that was a big boost there cool that guy and we continue on here and we have this really cool <laughs> moving platform now yes one thing that i didn't think of was of course that the rotation will basically change so one thing that we will need to do is go here and apply a separate collision like we did that will basically not rotate um so on here let's add this collision let's make it very very thin right and let's make it a bit bigger right covering this and make it very very thin and you know there we go at that height now this will also rotate because this uh, thing is moving across all the blueprint, right? Not only components. So I need to go into the event tick, right? And override this rotation of this box. So I can just go and set the weld rotation to always basically just be the same, right? Not moving. And now you can see that uh, we will not have that issue anymore of basically going and rotating the player okay we actually have that issue yet uh let's go quickly back here and i believe that we just need to increase this and oh yeah i'm stupid we need to make sure that this is set as block all if not the player will not be able to walk you know on top of that which is pretty important i must say all right so now with that said There we go we're good to go now the player doesn't rotate which is very very important and we can continue on with our level and let's just do one final thing which is this plane where we have the power up right so for this let's go and create a new ui so let's right click use interface widget blueprint use a widget that will be underscore and this will be something as power up open this up and let's add a canvas panel to our screen so we can place things and we are gonna go, gonna go ahead and just add a text and put the anchor at the top. And we have a speed burst power up. All right, this will be centered. This will be bigger. And this will be bigger like this. And then 0.5 and 0.5. And then position Y like this, and there we go. Cool. So with that said, what I can do is simply just spawn this, uh, you know, little thing over here. So we can also make a simple animation of flashing. So it's like you know running, running out, right? Uh, let me just rename it. So we can just go, for example, and begin with the color and opacity of uh, zero. All right, add a keyframe, go, one, go, and then again, uh, zero, you know, and you can see that it will repeat in a loop, I basically just kind of flash. So I can go to graph and then the event construct, which is like the begin play of this, I can get this and do a play animation and simply just put this to be a zero, so it will loop infinitely right 
And with that said, I can just go to the power up uh, speed boost uh, on the player blueprint, sorry. All right, which is uh, here. And simply before the delay, right, and taking it out, I'll just create a new widget. Of course, it'll be that power up to add it to the viewport. All right, connect this over here. And there we go. And then at the end, just go get this and do a remove from parent. So it will remove it right from the screen. And that's it. So now you can see that if I go and pick it up, we have the speed boost power up, which is flashing. And then it should go. There we go. And it goes. So everything is working. Now let's also select this death zone, right? And I just forgot about it because we need to make it bigger, right? So this danger area will basically just fill the whole game. All right? I mean, as simple as that, All right? So it'll be kind of here. And let's also open this up, get the collision and again, hide it in game, All right? Remember that we disabled that for testing, but now we're good to go. And now if I was to basically fall, I basically die and we restart the level, which is nice. Uh, also, this should, uh, I should still die with my enemies, let's just check. As you can see, we're not dying with the enemy, why? Well, this is right now going in the van graph, right, we're doing this. Um, if we are not dead, which which we are not doing the line transfer for enemy, visibility, uh, just adding that in the what, arrow, in the attack damage pass which is this one, right? And a third person character for our mesh. Let's check that we have, yes, visibility is indeed enabled. But let's also do it for a capsule component, right? And just put this on custom and put visibility in there. I think that might be the actual issue. So let's wait until this guy comes in. Okay. Wait, did oh, okay, so you know what's happening is detecting me <laughs> and going the other way. So let's create a new channel specifically for our player, which will be just way better. So let's go down, go to our collision, uh, which should be where is it? It should be here. There we go, and create a new trace channel. This will basically just be the player by default. It will be set to ignore, add it, and now we're gonna go into the enemy. And for the line trace damage, we're going to set that one to be the one that we want to impact. But then for a third person character, I'm going to set this to be by default like this. But for our player, which I need to compile, set it to be in block. And then for our mesh, visibility none, but for a player block. And now this should now only detect the player. All right. So let's just wait a few seconds should come and we die now you can see that the player did not um you know activate ragdoll and we had a lot of uh, different damages at the same time so we need to make sure that for our enemy we are only applying damage once okay so in here when we apply damage when i do i do once and as soon as we apply damage i'm gonna make a small delay of well i cannot make delays in here but uh, we are going to, uh, yes, only do it once, right? But also if we is, if it's only the player. And yes, I changed my mind. I'm going to only apply damage if it is the player. So player, branch, put on here, and there we go. Cool. So now you probably was wondering why the character doesn't fall with physics. That's because this, this pirate doesn't have the physics asset. So we go to skeleton, uh, sorry, to the create section. I can create this physics asset and create an assign. Create asset by default, and there we go, save, and everything should be like it is. And now if I die, you should now see that it will only play the sound once because it was only damaging once. And we have uh, the, there we go, ragdoll. Down. Now it did it uh, actually multiple times for some reason, even though we have the uh, do once, but that's 
basically because we are dying many times um, but we are going to just make sure that uh, we will only die once from the player perspective too so if I go to the third person character I am also apart from that gonna make a do once on here and that should uh, if I know how to type uh, solve the issue like I saw and there we go now we have pretty much everything set and um, the only thing that will be nice to add will be some background little music right some clouds uh, sounds all right so let's right click create a new folder and this will be audio and let me import the audio so I'm gonna basically leave the link in the description since it's on sound wave and let's just enable looping on this right and then we're gonna just drag it into our level and make sure that looping I think it should be automatically and there we go now we have that loop sound now it's a bit, a bit too loud so maybe 0 0.6 0 0.5 0 0.5 will be a bit better decent background noise right and then the only thing that we need to add is some you know nice music and again I have my music here let me go and put it on looping very important drag it again and I set it to maybe also 0.5 right so it will not be so loud and now yes this definitely feels way better I mean way way better so there we go nice and simple and that's it you have successfully created your side scroller platformer game which now you can add whatever you want to it and expand if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. It took me a lot of time and effort to make this mega tutorial. Remember that you can download the project files through Patreon or YouTube members, link in the description. Join my Discord server to talk to me and to the devs, follow me on my socials, and now yes, with all that said, bye bye.